This is Dusty Franklin. He's the principal engineer at NVIDIA, and you are about to watch him unpack the latest generative AI demo for Vision. Let's go. Sure. So naturally, we gravitate towards these vision language models where they can actually comprehend text and images simultaneously, which is called huh. multimodality. And in, in this example, it's just like describing the image. And we've been optimizing this pipeline for some time now so that it can be run um, more or less in real time. Here's another um, view that I have of actually verbally talking to Lava back and forth. Lava is like the vision version of Llama. Sure. And just more recently, actually, like just within the past couple of days here, um, <laughs> I've got this running on a live camera feed. So, if you are a Jaren of AI fan, click subscribe. We'll keep you updated. Thanks. And that's what oh. this is what it looks like when you actually just run the same prompt over and over and over again. And did, did it, you uh, did you overstuff this with the word handsome and you know? Uh, <laughs> no. it, it, does, it loves to say like my house is decrepit and like falling down and another. <laughs> it's, it's brutally honest with with, with things. But the, the cool part about this is you don't need to do like bespoke CNNs or other totally. television pipelines. It is totally open-ended on things. And I'm continuing to optimize the, the latency. Traditionally, you know, Vision I wouldn't have a deterministic latency. In this case, it's dependent on how many output tokens the, the model decides to um so first of all, this is running on an edge device. And then secondly, yes. you're not like saying, in addition, if you see letters, turn it into text. It just is fun. It just already knows all of that. And I'm like changing the prompt here on the the keyboard, but I'll make like a web UI around this. You can just change it. And eventually I'd like to have this where it's triggering actions and alerts based on it. With the, the latest Lava 1.5 model, it will reliably output JSON for sure. you so then you can programmatically parse this um, uh, yeah okay that would make sense yeah so jim when yeah. you see this as uh someone who's done a lot of computer vision and ai applications like what what does this do for you i think it's particularly interesting as kind of the input to even more interesting things so this gives you enough um I mean, it's interesting that the computer figures out what's going on in the scene, but the in the really interesting part is, so how would you use that as an interaction? Sure. So what we've seen is, you know, there's been a lot of hype around, I think, Rabbit R1, which is a small device, edge device that you'd have in your hand. You'd talk yeah, yeah. About it and Saw that scene, yes. Um, that seems a little vaporware to me, but that's a different story. Oh, snap. <laughs> But once you can ascertain what's going on and what the, the person is doing in a scene or an object, right. then you can do an actual action about it. So that's where it becomes really, um, you can start doing what they call effective computing, which is, you know, kind of dialogues, uh, explorations. Um, I think about it as, Here's an application where you'd have a person with dementia. Sure. And you'd have a way to interact with them on an ongoing basis. Um, and that kind of takes some of the pressure off a, um, you know, a family member or whoever would have to do that all the time. Sure. And I know you've done a lot of robotics projects. I mean, how, if you had to quantify what step change this is above computer vision, I see car, I see table, right? Like traditional object detection. What kind of step change do you think Lava and generative AI and images uh, represent? Um, when you start the idea of embodiment, which is, you know, you have a computer or a machine or a robot that can actually kind of ingest this type of data. This is kind of one of the cornerstones of what you're looking to do, because you can't just have all these different algorithms running around like OpenCV or, or whatever doing the vision. You need some type of integration. Right. And, and what a, you know, a large language model or 
the variations of the NNs, as I call them. <laughs> uh, that allows a lot of the heavy lifting to be done kind of behind the scenes and it, it feels almost magically. One, one of the things that I think the best description is it's not an invention, it's a discovery hmm. that people have noticed, right? Jim, so, dropping wisdom on us. 